Hi, I'm Hao Xing Yap. I'm an engineer at QSight Technologies, and I had a background in RF and microwave component design. In this video, I will show you how to design impedance matching networks quickly, and where to download this example at the end. Let's start with a short explanation on impedance matching. We do impedance matching for the following reasons to get maximum power transfer from source to load by doing conjugate matching of the load and source impedances to get minimum noise by matching the input of a low noise transistor to its optimal noise impedance to get optimal power added efficiency by matching the output of an amplifier to an impedance determined by load pool analysis to achieve any other impedance dependent specs such as EVM, ACPR, or BER as determined from load pool contour analysis Let's get started. Here I'm using the impedance matching synthesis tool in Genesis, which will automatically calculate the conjugate matching network between source and load for maximum power transfer. We specify the frequency range to match over from 1000 to 2000 MHz. Next, we define the source and load impedances. They can be real, complex, RLC networks, or even frequency dependent as parameter files. I'll select a complex source impedance of 75 plus 10 J ohms and leave the load at 50 ohms. Genesis will calculate the conjugate matching network for it, that is, with an input impedance of 75 minus 10 J ohms and output impedance of 50 ohms. We can explore the possible matching network topologies to use. In a case of pi or T networks, select capacitive or inductive tendency depending on whether you want to block or pass DC. The Calculate button generates the matching network schematic. The quality of match is set by the match goals. I'll change the target S11 and S22 from the default minus 30 dB to minus 20 dB to make optimization easier for the purpose of this video. Genesis will attempt to optimize our chosen matching topology to match these goals over the frequency range we set. The success of the optimization is shown in the status bar and by how close the error function is to zero. The error function is the difference between the calculated S11, S22 return loss versus our match goals. When it reaches zero, it means the chosen matching network satisfies the match goals. If not, try another network topology. Here the progress bar is stuck at 13.5. Let's stop the optimization and try another topology. Let's choose LC bandpass and click the calculate button to see its topology. There is a transformer, which is typically hard to realize. Let's choose the No Transformer option instead and optimize it. You can see that the S11 and S22 return losses just managed to satisfy minus 20 dB at the edges of the frequency band. It may not give us much room for component tolerances. Since the impedance matching network synthesis is pretty fast, let's try the LC pseudo low pass topology to see if it does better. We can see it does better than our minus 20 dB return loss across the band. The LC pseudo low pass also has an equivalent distributed topology based on transmission lines, which can be conveniently implemented in microstrip. The thinnest and widest realizable microstrip line widths are set by the max and min characteristic impedance. Click on Calculate and note the TRL pseudo low pass topology has the same form as the LC pseudo low pass. Let's optimize it, and we can see it just meets our match goals. If it does not, increase the order of the TRL pseudo low pass network and repeat the steps again. Now we are ready to convert this into a microstrip layout by selecting all components using Ctrl A key and choosing schematic convert using advanced T line. Here we can choose from several different physical implementation of our transmission line matching network. The most convenient is the microstrip. It will ask for the substrate to implement on. If we have not used any substrates before, the pull-down menu is blank. Clicking OK allows us to choose from a library of common substrates, from low-cost FR4 to more expensive Duride materials. Let's choose Duride. You can see that the microstrip T junction and two and discontinuity models have been automatically inserted into the schematic for subsequent circuit and EM simulation. Right-clicking on the schematic tab at the bottom and choosing Add Layout allows us to see how the microstrip layout looks like. To physically connect the components on the layout, we can select All using Ctrl A and choose Layout Connect Selected Parts to see the physical layout. 
Now let's tackle a more challenging impedance matching requirement. That is, how to simultaneously match the input and output of a device, such as a transistor between the source and load for maximum power transfer. You'll be able to download this example at the end of the video. Let's choose a transistor from the S parameter parts library. To achieve a simultaneous input and output conjugate match, the transistor must be unconditionally stable over our frequency range of intended operation, which is from 2 to 2.5 GHz. We will use a linear simulator to analyze its stability over a wider band of frequency for extra margin of safety, from 1.5 to 3 GHz. First, let's look at its S parameters. We can see that it has an S21 gain of about 6 dB. For a device to be unconditionally stable, its stability factor K and its stability measure SB1 must be more than 1 and 0 respectively. So let's add them to the plot. We can see that K is below 1 towards the right half of the plot. Let us stabilize it by adding a resistor in the bias line. This brings K to exceed 1 across the band. Let's tune the resistor value up from the 470 ohms to reduce its impact on the transistor but still retain unconditional stability across the band. A value of 1200 ohms seems good. Let's fix it at that by making it not tunable. With the transistor made unconditionally stable from 1.5 to 3 gigahertz, we are ready to simultaneously match it for maximum power transfer from 2 to 2.5 gigahertz. We will leave the source and load impedance at 50 ohms. We can choose the type of input matching network like we did in the first part of this video. Then we add the transistor as a device after the input matching network. It can be an S parameter file or a design schematic in our workspace. We will specify our stabilized transistor circuit. Next, we add an output matching network section after the transistor device. One thing I find useful is that when we click calculate, we can see the complete schematic of the input and output matching network topology around our transistor. Before we start optimization, let's specify the match goals by setting the return loss for S11 and S22 to be less than minus 15 dB. Now let us see if the default pi matching network is good enough. It is not because the error function is stuck at about 17. Let's stop the optimization and select another matching network topology to try. Let's try the LC pseudo low pass topology that worked for us earlier. Clicking calculate followed by optimize we arrive at our LC pseudo low pass input and output matching networks. Since the LC pseudo low pass is suitable in this case, then it is likely that the TRL pseudo low pass may also be a suitable topology and has the benefit of convenient realization using microstrip. Let's try it since it's pretty quick. We confirm it is so from the return loss graphs. Now let's make the microstrip layout of a completed amplifier. We associate our transistor with a simple SOT23 layout footprint. Then just like before, we select all schematic using control A and choose schematic convert all using advanced T-line into microstrip on the Duroid substrate. Right click on the schematic tab to add a layout view. Here the layout elements are connected electrically by rubber band lines. To see the physical connection properly, use control A to select all and the layout menus connect selected parts followed by center selected parts. Now that you've seen how to quickly do single stage as well as simultaneous input and output conjugate match, you may want to try this technique on your own specific impedance matching problem. If you're a Genesis user, the example I use in this video is in the link below. If you're not a Genesis user, you can follow the same link and it's easy to get access to a free trial. Thanks for watching.